Welcome, everybody. We are starting into our housing hike. This is casually touring player houses in the Elder Scrolls Online, seeing the cool things that you can do with the houses, with the furnishings, with a little bit of creativity and design. You can do a lot with ESO housing. So, infinite possibilities. And Greymoor is new and fresh. We'll maybe start to see some Greymoor things as we tour through the houses here today. So, have a lot of houses. I have 11 on PCEU this week. It's going to be amazing. So, we're going to start with... Oh... No. <laughs> Somebody said to go to their friend's house. Oh, wait, I think I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Good way to start. Good way to start. Perfect way to start. Uh, there Hi. we go. There we go. There we go. Exercise Cover Cottage. Uh, Darza 225 said, Oh, you have to come tour my friend's house. I was like, okay, I'll do that. Oh, hype. Stormahawk, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so they have a small cottage in the middle of a wood where a young alchemist lives her life of isolation. So what do you do with the Exercise Come Cottage? Witchy cottage in the swamp? Do you play up that theme or do you make it something different? And with housing, with ESO, you can really do a lot with it. So a lot of people kind of make it so it's how they would like to live or how their character might live in game. Or you could just use this space creatively and kind of just kind of use it as a canvas. So I believe in this instance, they use it more as how does our in-game character live in a bit more of a realistic fashion. Shutterbug, thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. So Rob Dog 2000's home for a young alchemist living a life of isolation in the swamp here. So there's no particular theme for our weekly housing hike, and I tour these houses each week. For both PCEU and PCNA at twitch.tv slash jhrls heroes, welcome to join during the live stream, or I'll follow this and put it on YouTube. You can subscribe for free on YouTube. Please do so if you haven't yet. And, oh, this is awesome. So already I'm starting to see some of these Greymore home goods furnishings being added to this farm here. So these solitude uh, fences are stupidly cheap from the home goods furniture in, in solitude. And I think the big one's like 250 gold. It's like three wide, or there's a single one for 100 gold. So, yeah, so home goods furnishings are always good. We're actually doing a home goods furnishing exclusive contest in, in June, so I'm excited to see what people can do, make with those. Works perfectly for offsetting this little farm. I think it works perfectly for offsetting this little farm with the pumpkins. We're harvesting that one. They have lettuce and wheat. <laughs> I kind of like how they have the grass here. Maybe those are some, like, weeds growing in. It actually kind of makes use of it. And really changing the uh, texture with some of those little, like, dirt mounds. And they even have, like, a little flower garden in the back. Kind of very subtle there. Or it looks very natural. And just, like, maybe, like, a little viewing platform here. Lovely little farm. We'll get screenshots along the way. I'll upload those to spicyeconomics.com. We have thousands of... I think more than 3,000 pictures of ESO houses if you want some decoration inspiration. And those are categorized so you can, maybe if you're working on a particular project, you can get some ideas. Okay, so a young alchemist. Ooh, ooh, do you see what they did? Like, this just looks like such a natural house front right here. But look, it's entirely built up. So they have the Merkmeyer wall there and some of these elsewhere walls for the roof. And... So this entire front room has been added. I really like how natural that ends up looking. <laughs> Didn't even really realize it was different. Yeah, it looks nice, it looks nice. <laughs> Door handle using the ivory. It works well on both sides. Maybe a little hard to close from this side. And then what do we have inside? Oh, camera's gonna be a little tight here. So this is the room that they added. And then inside, we'll kind of see how this alchemist lives. I suppose it would make sense that they'd have some live critters getting mud crab juices for their experiments. <laughs> Maybe that's just dinner. <laughs> oh, poor bird, poor bird. Life of isolation. Living a nice, quiet life here. And a really lovely alchemy setup. Love these orcish tables. They're very sturdy, so they can handle uh, chemical spills. 
hopefully. <laughs> Looks really pretty. A lot of little colors kind of sprinkled throughout there. Makes it feel a little bit more lively. Good touch with like the crimson torch bug there. A little bit more movement. Again, makes this feels feel a bit more attended to. Oh, look, clever little cauldron set up here. So they have they have the podium, kind of like they're they're flipping through it like a recipe, adding ingredients in the right proportions, cooking things for just the right amount of time. No, nope. doing it by the book. I think a book is a good addition there. Okay, and we'll keep going up. Oh, uh, that's oh 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 um. Somebody pointing out that they have... Oh, no, where was it? <laughs> I saw it. See, this one, this one, this throne is the uh, Fall of Nesty Throne from the Antiquity Furnishings. That was from... Mm, Malmeltor, I want to say, or Greenshade. Maybe Greenshade. Yeah, so each of the zones has different antiquities. And Greenshade is Greenshade. Thank you, Aurelia. And... Yeah, so we'll start to see a lot of these antiquity furnishings pop up into player houses as well. And then, how does Alch alchemists live in isolation? Well, with some books. I have a backpack. Maybe they go out adventuring every once in a while. Have to go out into town. Seems like they picked up a fresh book recently. Or maybe they go off into the woods and read in isolation even more so. A bit more peaceful out there. Okay, so definitely telling a little bit of a story here with how their character lives. Nice quiet life here in the woods. Not scary woods. I think they've done a pretty good job of changing the topography of this place. Adding the pine trees makes it a lot less swampy. And I think it ends up working out really well. So with, an, with a nice peaceful farm here too. Self-sustaining. Okay, great way to start. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Darza and Rob Dog. Okay, and we'll keep going along <laughs> to the real adoring fans, Hall of Lunar Champion. As we continue with our housing hike, and again, there's no theme for this, so we'll see something completely different up next. Let they make their triangular pitch of that roof. Oh, they just had two of the altar walls connecting up at the top. Book in the backpack is a nice touch. Oh, Palimpsest says, hello, I'm going to tour two of your houses today. <laughs> Palimpsest is, like, amazing with making, like, mechanical ships. I'm excited to see those later on. If that's what they did, I think that might be part of what they have. Um, okay, the Royal Adoring fan says that they have rebuilt their Hall of the Lunar Champion. They have an Elsewhere Adaptorium with some secrets. Ooh. I hear the cat. We see Elsewhere Style. We see Khajiit. Yes, we do. <laughs> You're running away. <laughs> They're like getting in position. <laughs> I think they want to be here. <laughs> oh, 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 this is cool. Yeah, I, I love seeing these things. They really pop out, don't they? Uh, so new antiquity, this mirror from Reaper's March. So we can go scry that up. Now... Each of the different furnishings comes from, like, different sources. It seems like a lot of them... A lot of them you can find the leads for just by, like, harvesting nodes there in the, in the zone. That seems to be how it is for a good chunk of them. And then also doing treasure maps in that zone will lead you to another good chunk of them. And then there are just a few... A few specific furnishings that come from a bit more particular sources, but that's a good place to start. So if, you, if you're actually interested in those, or look them up. Um, there are different guides that have where the different everything drops, including like the mythic items and all the other fun stuff from the antiquity system. So, exciting to see the new stuff. Really adding to the color scheme that you have going on here. So it really ties together all these blue and red and gold carpets. So you see Elsewhere carpet, red and blue and gold. Mirror, red, blue, gold. I think it works pretty well. And it's magical too, with all the clouds floating around. Okay. Continuing along through. Ooh, bedroom. 
Must be a dormitory of some sort. A lot, a lot of guests here. Adeptorium. Oh, so it's uh, some sort of school then. So these would be for the adepts. For training. They're training. Living in tight quarters. No privacy. Oh, new Canarthi tapestry from uh, Canarthi's Roost as well. Got new antiquity furnishing. Beautiful look on that. Fills the wall pretty well. Pretty big. That's what I like about a lot of the antiquities. They're big, colorful. They have high impact as opposed to a lot of uh, their uh, basic furnishings. Okay, so the Adeptorium. Maybe learning about... Moon magic. Maybe maybe a bit of like a kind temple type of a feel. Okay, we'll head into the Halls of Colossus. Whoa. <laughs> it's like, this feels like Moongrave vein, but this is definitely Halls of Colossus. So, Halls of Colossus is normally just like this very flat area. Um, they built like a temple. Central banners. Yeah, so very elsewhere feels continuing with this. Centrot is here to greet us. Hello, Centrot. Give you a couple pets, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe dangerous. Looks beautiful. Let's head in. So this entire structure has been built up. Uh, crazy to have done that. So I see the huge towers on the side. I see some of these uh, broken monuments. I rarely see those used. That's a really very good way of using those. And then the big floors up above, making a big wall. Wow, so all this has been built up. That's so awesome. Using the altar here. Not making an altar feels so naturally set here. Love it. I know, it's completely crazy. Uh, Pretty People says that's the main place is rebuilt, e rebuilt. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, this altar is awesome. <laughs> Try, I like a top down view of the altar uh, for a screenshot. Uh, this, this is half decent. Okay, more to see here. Very Khajiit focused type of a build. I hope that those are walking stones <laughs> through the sand. I think they are. Where are we going? Oh, we're gonna go wash our clothes and pray here. <sighs> Come on. Try to kneel. Ah, keeps being overly sensitive. I don't know why. Oh, kneel here anyway. Kneel here anyway. Praying, praying. I'm closer. I'm closer to Kanarthi than you are. <laughs> That's right. Okay, all good, all good. Bit more of a humble type of a fountain set up here where they just have like the one little head of water trickling through. I think simple can be effective for more of a meditative type of a place. And the Canarthi wind, wind bells here. Okay, this is really fun. All the Kajiti goodness here. More rooms. All been built up. Oh, wait, there's like Rooms up to the side, too. So much to see. I kind of wonder how you go about building this. Probably one of two ways. You can either kind of have your rooms in mind and then kind of <laughs> build out to encompass them, or you start with a layout, start with your basic structure, and then start to fill them in. Or maybe kind of do those simultaneously. So this must be more of like a private study area, maybe more for like a headmaster of some sort. It seems, it seems to be a, like a school, right? With all the books. Places to come and relax your mind and learn some valuable things. Practical things too, ah, like how to fight against this draw Mothra. We'll, we'll have some practice here. We'll fight. 
Okay, I think I think that will about be everything. I I think so. I like how it's very closed in. It feels very private, exclusive. Carter says, I think this is one of the best halls of Lone Champion I've seen. Absolutely gorgeous. I know, it's like perfectly well done. I, I, I really feel like I'm like at a school of some sort. Oh, wait, wait, they, they have a place for me to go. Oh, secret place. Oh, no, no, no. I missed this. Elsewhere Auditorium with secrets. Ha, ah, ha, ha. Totally missed the secret part. Secrets. Ooh, going out to the woods. Special training happens here. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, no. They said secrets. Secret monkey. Oh, now I have to be more careful. <laughs> Where else might there be secrets? Hmm. Hmm. If I were a secret, where would I be hiding? <laughs> oh, now I'm on the lookout. Through the tapestry. No. <laughs> uh, through this other tapestry. Uh, no. <laughs> um... Mm hmm? No. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Secrets. Uh, there, were, there were stairs. Go back. Wait, wait, wait. I, I went up the stairs already. I'll come, I'll come for more secrets. Secrets down that way. No, there's an invisible wall. If I were a secret, I have to look down this way. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. There's something over there. There's some way to get over there. Oh, wait. There is a secret place. Secret path. Secret path. I see something. Oh, or maybe that was just where I was before. Okay, maybe, maybe this goes down then. Maybe this goes down somewhere. Oh, this way, this way, this way. I see, I see. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's like all ruined up. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Secret altar, secret altar. Okay. That's fun, that's fun. Thank you. Beautiful. Palm trees like jutting out of the rock. It's actually a fun way of doing it. <laughs> Pulled on a big statue, there might be secrets. Yeah, I know, more secrets maybe. Okay, I think that will do it. I think that'll do it. I'll just say thank you, and if there are more things for me to check out, I'm sure they'll be like, no, 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 you missed this thing. <laughs> I hope we hope I saw everything. Uh really fun, really fun. Using the vines is a, a good way to uh have have some secrets. You don't always check behind them, but if you know it. Okay, they say thanks for visiting. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much again, Real Doran fan. Okay, we'll continue with our housing hike. With the Fae Pixies, Velothi Reverie. They have a little crafting house, which... Relatable. Might just want a little place to go craft. We'll see how Fae Pixie has done it up. You can always think about housing in terms of, like, practicality, too. Like, what can you do with housing that's actually useful? Well, you can put all the crafting stations in there. You can put like a transmute station, you can put the uh, the target dummies, test your DPS, and a few other things, adding chests so that you can actually store things up. So there, there's a practical side of housing too. Okay, so getting in here, we have a fountain. A bit more of a calm feel here. They have their blue pride going on okay so they have their crafting area so we have a woodworking shop over on this side right so you can use the the hanging plaques so that you can kind of tell where everything is and what do they have well they have a lot of woodworking examples on display so things that maybe their character would craft up lots of different styles here whether it's argonian or Red guard or whatever it happens to be. Oh, oh, we even have a new wicker basket. I shouldn't be so excited, but I love the textures on these new smaller items. They're like very detailed, very precise, pretty fun. And yeah, there's like a lot of baskets. 
Never been so excited about wicker baskets. Okay, and clothing area over here. Imagine we'll see bright, colorful fabrics. We do see bright, colorful fabrics. They have di oh, dice station, another good thing that you can use in the house. Great use of these elsewhere altars. You can add the then smaller items onto those. I like what they've done with these stacked cloths where they just sink back into the back of the altar. So normally these are nice squares, but instead we just get like a half square. Uh, a little smaller, maybe more fine cloth that way. That's one great thing about housing is that you can overlap things or hide things into walls or combine things in creative ways, co cobble things together. And it's not like modular housing like other games are where you have like a a tile and you can place a furnishing on the tile and then you can place something on the next tile it's like no everything is interactable like you can squish everything together and make things creatively and that's what i love about eso housing which which yeah just all the sorts of different ways of doing it making masks <laughs> Oh, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe they're sewing together some, some uh, masks. Oh yeah, maybe some smaller cloths there. Oh yeah, this is a new little uh, patching kit too. That's from Solitude. It's craftable. Very detailed. I've never seen it up close. First time. Yeah, for a lot of these, it'll be my first time seeing these new furnishings from Greymoor and from Western Skyrim and Blackreach. Probably won't see a lot of vampiric things yet. Okay, and they have their transmute area. So again, they just wanted a nice little crafting house, dressing it up a little bit. The transmute station happens to be very clockworkified. It was from Clockwork City, so what did they add here? Well, they added the clockwork plating down below, makes it a lot more metallic, adding a clockwork table, adding some fabricant trees, very glistening, and a dwarven spider there with the rocks. So, so home goods furnishings, mostly home goods furnishings and a couple crafted items definitely makes this have more of a clockwork style to it. So kind of take something and instead of just plunking down your transmute station and say, I have a transmute station, well, you can, you know, expand on it, make it feel like it's part of the house a bit more. Yeah, I love the fabric and trees because they, they really pick up the lights so well. And then we have a bank. Bank is probably going to have all their chests. It does have all their chests. So again, you can store up a lot of things in these chests and coffers, which you can get from the uh, rip voucher vendor. Store up all sorts of things. The other thing is if you actually put furnishings in those, then you can decorate out of them. So most housing people just fill these full of furnishings. But for everybody else, uh, you can put your gear and, and other things in those. I really like this bank. <laughs> with the with the teller windows really good use of those display cases a lot more bright with all the paintings in the back it, it livens it up quite a lot I, I i definitely like that detail makes it look a little fancier a little bit more soulful which is hard to pull off with a bank so i think it's really fun and then fizzes is there being all stretchy and cute and Kitty like, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> I like how the yarn ball is there too. Oh, it's freezing up. Uh oh. Um. Oh, that was weird. Okay, I had a huge lag spike, but we're okay now. We're okay again. Okay, continuing down into the crafting house. Now there's gonna be an outside area there too. I'll go out there last. Down into the basement. Oh, we have a new solitude plush rug. I feel like they have some thickness to them. Everybody says ESO housing has spoiled me. I can never go back to uh, Star Wars or BDO. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot going right for ESO housing. Oh, so we have like a stage here. Oh, fun, 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 fun. With instruments, a good blue backdrop. Come and dance here, maybe. Kinda. <laughs> Nearly. Camera's not liking me too well. But yes, dancing stage. 
playing stage, singing stage. And for my efforts, for my dancing efforts, I get whatever is in this coffer. Oh, what are you going to bless me with for my dancing efforts? A potato! I guess that's about right. It's probably fair. I guess can eat. I have new salted eggs. Eggs. This is my first time seeing them up close. With ham. Eggs and ham. Six Bem says, Hello, Jay Hart. Good to see ya. Welcome to our housing hike. Our touring player houses. Starting with EU right now. We're in Faith Pixie's little crafting house. Getting some decoration inspiration along. Oh, that's a new salted wheel, too. Uh, just all these new furnishings that have already started to be added to player houses. So, lots of. That's what you can do with the new furnishings. You can either like go all in on trying to make a house in the new style, or just kind of take your houses as they are and figure out some things that you can maybe swap out that are going to give give it a bit more of the feel that you want. Okay, we have a more like a jewelry crafting area. Good. Very intricate furnishings here. Seem appropriate for jewelry crafting. I believe that's one of the new Solitude Mirrors. It's been placed upside down. Wow, this, I think that's a craftable one. I didn't realize the back of it was so awesome looking. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a that interwoven, not Solitude design. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And a good blacksmithing area. Again, kind of, kind of dressed up here. Not just plopping a blacksmith station down and saying that's good it's adding elements that really encapsulate what blacksmithing might mean so they have a forge here fiery churning forge here and maybe making some making some things here good metal work and then we might just have a tranquil area here for our alchemy makes sense a garden for our enchanting and our alchemy. So a bit of a magical feel. I really think of alchemy and enchanting as the more magical aspects of crafting. And it looks really great here. So maybe growing some of our own ingredients for the alchemy. And then kind of like the life and death aspects of enchanting. Love the salted soil. Yeah, this is a Velothi Reverie. Fae Pixie on EU. Great use of the greenhouse, too, from the luxury vendor. You can pick those up on the guild traders now. It will be back eventually. I just have a party on Fridays with the luxury vendor. <laughs> okay, and I believe that will do it. Thank you, Faye Pixie. Beautiful crafting house. Okay, we'll keep going along. Go oh, to Lotlurian's Hollow Lunar Champion up next. Lotlurian had a little bit of a backstory for this one, so I shall try to read it. Okay, uh, Lotlurian says that they redid their Hall of Lunar Champion. It is now a safe place for their pirate captain, Ravina Melmanentum, from Latin for honey, and her crew. And Ray is an Imperial deserter who ran away from the Three Banners War after her parents were killed. Since she is a deserter, she started to live on the edge, managed to gather a crew, and took a lot of what is right and what is not into her own hands. She is from the very old lineage of Imperials, which were blessed by the Call of Dragon Blood, a powerful gift given from Akatosh himself for his loyal followers, known as Dragon Knights. This gift resonates strongly as dragons reappeared in elsewhere and Rey just followed her guts. And recently, her interest in dragons made her stay longer on the land, so she and her crew managed to create a shelter for every person in need to stretch his legs, relax, and make some gold hidden from the eyesight of the government. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So we have a an Imperial deserter refuge home cool <laughs> okay so going super rp on this one a lot of people have been here signing that guest log from essential housing tools you can open up your house make a list make it open for visitors okay so an imperial deserter with a crew maybe a bit of like an outlaw here 
seem to be trafficking in some magical wares. Ooh, mysterious blue goo glowy goodness. Maybe selling that on the black market. Okay, go in here. Oh, yeah, well, this is a very much more bright and open market than I was expecting. <laughs> I love I love this style. Um Just all of the different merchants. So it must be like a crew crew is uh, selling here between things while while they uh, are kind of away from the Imperials, kind of all on their own, trading, making making their way through, getting by. Seems like a friendly place. <laughs> Though I suppose at any time, they could be they could be overrun, kicked out of here. Oh, there's just like all these like little shops and stuff. It's fun. Little secret places. Maybe there's supposed to be like residences. Okay, got a little residence. Uh oh, I've <laughs> been a little bit of a mudslide here. Maybe that was there already. They're just getting by. They're really just trying to get by. Seems like they present things nicely to their customers more than they live. Yeah, me meager living here, it seems to be. For the most part. That was a lot of crew. A lot of beds here represent a lot of people. Okay, keep going through. Food, like a mess hall. See some dice there. Playing, gambling. Mostly feels peaceful though. Not rambunctious type of gambling, more like friendly, friendly gambling. Okay, we have, ooh, something for me to open up. Okay, so. It says here, got a special treat just for me in here. What is it going to be just for me? Oh, ah, no, it says he forgot to put something in there. <laughs> That's fine. No special treat for me. Paying customers only. Oh, I don't know. I better buy something. <laughs> Ooh, clever use of that green crystal. I think that's like the Aeon Stone. This have a little bit of that green crystal poking through. I don't see that too often. Most people just have their whole crystal poking up. One's kind of like a nice glow to this whole place too. Okay, yeah, all these little shops. That's fun. <laughs> the banners there would indicate trouble. Oh, it's like a fake door. I was like, oh, well, I'll have to make sure to go back and get to there. No, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's not very real. It can always make your home look a little bit more big and open that way, though, if you add kind of like extra rooms with, with the doors. Makes it feel like there's a lot more substance behind this. It's not just this front as well. They have places to store things or places to live or... The, the, the city will continue in other directions. I don't actually think I saw everything yet. Oh, we're, we're pulling things up. Oh, it like continues way down there. Oh my gosh, how do I get down there? I see, I see some sort of path. <laughs> I'll try to make my way around. Ooh, Sky Shark. Precarious a bit. <laughs> I just want to go collect these, right? You see these about, get your one-third of a skill point. <laughs> it's it's a, a pile of dirty laundry, not a mudslide. Very well might be the case. Wait, 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 there's some... Oh, I went there, I went there. Okay, continuing down to the water. We see them pulling up goods from below. Definitely an indicator to go and investigate this place. Oh, we have dragons here, too. The Richard says, I like these crafting areas people are making. Possible contest idea for another time. Mm, yeah, we could do a more like a generic, like, create an awesome blacksmithing station area. That sort of a thing. 
end up having too many, too many, too many contest ideas. So, um, I can only do a couple of months. Yeah, we're, this for this month with Graymore coming out, we're doing uh, a new house, Snowmelt Suite. So just make the Snowmelt Suite beautiful, or do a creative use of the space, or we're also doing just a use the new home goods furnishings and come up with something fun using those. A lot of new kind of snow snow swept trees and some new fences and things like that they can use. Let's see what people can come up with those. Seems like we're definitely trafficking these blue glowy crystals. And art can tell a lot kind of about the culture of this place. They definitely seem to be outside the law. Oh, 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 oh like a little dog hut. <laughs> Cute little use of this this little merchant stall. Most of it is actually sunk into the rest of the wall here, so it just kind of meshes very well. Makes us much smaller. Fits the feel that they're going for. Nothing too elaborate for the dog. Oh, the black banner uh, with the with pirate. Ooh, that's an achievement furnishing. I. Don't recall what zone at the moment. Maybe somebody knows. Yeah, a lot of the banners that you see are going to be from from various achievement vendors. Ah, more merchants. Fish, we have some fish. Spices, fresh goods. Ooh. <laughs> they are guarding the treasure here. I see, I see. They're the muscle. Muscle of this outfit. Maybe the only bed I've seen. So maybe this is where our lead character, the captain, Ray, sleeps. Because we saw that we saw the smaller beds just kind of up above. Those were very all much together. This is only nice looking bed so far. It seemed to indicate that. And then a place to relax. A place to hang out with the crew. Let loose, have some drinks. Skuma. <sighs> more muscle, more muscle. And I'll do it. Type of floor. Uh, th these are elsewhere floors. These are craftable. Or some of them are probably the tops of some of the rectangular elsewhere platforms. They're big. They're really big. And that gets you this nice floor that you can kind of use with some structure. Oh, and they even, this is like the boundary, they even built right up to the boundary, pushing these platforms out, so you have a nice dock out there. Okay, I really like the look of this area. It really feels like a place for these, like, outlaws. <laughs> I don't know if I can actually, I'm like right hugging the border. Oh, I have a picture with a dog in it. I don't know if I can really fit everything in, though. It's like the complexity of this place is really fun. Wordy Wolf with a follow. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to our housing hike. We're continuing on PCNA as we tour. Just toured Lurian's home, Hall of Colossus. Really good. We'll continue along to Bean Sprouts or Dope Jungle House. More homes to see, more homes to be inspired by. Oh, Inklings here. Oh my gosh, Inklings. I'm going to go follow Inklings if you haven't. Okay, next up we have Bean Sprout Surdell Jungle House. They've made this into a Bandari trading post. And Bean Sprout says that traders need a place to rest. So we'll go see a restful place for our Bandari traders. Usually also a bit outside the law. <laughs> it seems like you can't really have a good city <laughs> that is, like, super lawful. I just have to do it. I wonder why that would be. Maybe anything anything that's very successful is going to invite power to come and overtake it. And so you see all these shops. They tend to be outside the law. Okay, and 
continuing on PC EU. Oh wow, bean sprout! I've toured several bean sprouts homes before. Uh, I'm always impressed by them. Man, this is really impressive. Look how much they've changed this place. Like it's it's hard to even tell like what was here before and not. But they've they've added this whole front area and this this entire back side area too. Um, back here, this has all been built up. That's awesome. That's awesome. What do we have back here? Yeah, this has all been built up. That's really impressive. Okay, so like a Bandari trading post. I was starting to see some of these new salty uh, food items. Those always look nice. Fish and new mushrooms and breads. Going up, going up, going up. A bit more of a Breton style going on with the carpets and a lot of the woodwork. Can you read into that however you want? Yeah, there's a lot of Breton things going on, so maybe, maybe that's primarily what our traders are. Or maybe they just like the style. Oh, new uh, plush solitude carpet. So, again, incorporating more of the new furnishings that are available. Maybe they had some of the old Breton ones, and they're like, I kind of like these solitude ones better. Maybe I'll swap some of those out. I feel a bit warmer. More, more of the sauce two carpets. Okay, yeah, I like this. So a place for people to rest. Feels like a very relaxing type of a place. Uh, imagine you come in here tired, just need a place to come and sleep. It's nice and warm. Friendly people to take care of you a bit. Let you stay without too many questions asked. <laughs> seems Seems to be the... Seems to be kind of the vibe I'm getting from this, and it's just like a nice one. And then trading here, weighing things, moving goods in. Again, not asking too many questions. Oh yeah, this is, wow, that's only 200 items total that they've used in this place. Now, a funny thing about this is I don't even think you can get inside the house. So they've just used the courtyard here. Um... <laughs> Or is, is the house? No, that that's the house. See, they, they like haven't even used the house part of it. They're just using the courtyard. So lots of times it's a matter of decisions. You, you have to work within your item limit. So do you use the courtyard? Do you use the inside? Or do you uh, split it? I went with the courtyard and I, I think it's really fun. Wait, can, are there like multiple levels here? I went all the way up, right? All the way up? I went all the way up. Yes. Okay, all good, all good. Okay, that was like really, really fun. Thank you, Bean Sprout. Restful restful trading post. It helps that like the sunbeams are coming in. <laughs> it's like it's like glorified. Amazing job all, all around. Okay, we'll continue along with our housing hike. So a lot of great houses to get to today. We'll go to Ixie's Earth Ball Sanctuary. I believe Ixie said that they had a couple of visual effects from essential housing tools. I'll see if they load in. Hopefully they do. I think my, think my EHD is all up to date. Yeah, that's by Cardinal05. And essential housing tools has a lot of tools in it. Uh, beyond what the normal housing UI has. It's actually what I'm using to port around to these different houses, make a favorites list, sign the guest journals, uh, visit open houses. You can have portals in your homes. You can add NPCs with dialogues to your homes. You can align things. You can group things to, well, you can group things together and then rearrange them into geometric shapes. Um, a lot you can do with EHT. I have some visual effects. Okay, good. I can add visual effects, which we'll see a few of here. We'll see a few visual effects. You don't have to use EHD, but I, I think there are a lot of good things with it. And basically, what they did with Greymore is they took a lot of what, as far as I can tell, they took a lot of what Cardinal had been able to figure out as far as being able to move things more precisely and added that as a, and Cardinal worked on that, made that a feature into the 
precision edit mode and how that's now part of the base game with housing which is awesome um yeah okay <laughs> what do we have ixie has a dark brotherhood sanctuary dark brotherhood sanctuary with the reds and the blacks the hands the mother a little creepy the candles I just love the red and the black contrast. It's always worked so well. A lot of the new vampiric furnishings also follow that color scheme. So that'll be kind of fun to see how people kind of maybe use those together or use them in place of that. Oh yeah, even turning back around, we have Dark Brotherhood. Um, everywhere, everywhere. That's part of the basic house, I think. <laughs> I haven't seen the visual effects yet. Okay, fishing up from here. Oh, there we go. Wait, is... Nope, I'm all alone. Okay, that's fine. Brotherhood, the total resonator controls... Uh -oh. The minds of the people of Kavach. We have, like, what looks like an organ. I guess it's a total resonator. So we must be near Kavach or under Kavach, and somehow this is controlling the people of Kavach. Oh no! Let's go make sure that stays exactly how it is. <laughs> so that was actually one of the NPC dialogues, so that it could actually have the uh, text come up. So adding those dwarven pipes with all the little clockwork pieces there makes it look like some sort of a nefarious machine, right? Magical crystals powering it somehow. So maybe a bit of RP here too. Why why Kavach? Why why is that being uh controlled? Who's controlling them? What are they hoping to get from that big cold bath? It feels cold to me. <laughs> it doesn't they have like a blue flame here too. You get to be cold. You get to take a nice cold shower. And continuing through, what has Ixie done here? Why are we controlling people? So that'd be one effect out of eight. Seem to be a collector of some sort, putting all their rare favorite things here. Seem to be a lot of weird plants. Putting those on display. Why? Maybe this is what we're controlling the people for. Get secrets, get the dirt on where they can find more exotic plants. Maybe they're studying them, trying to get some properties. Maybe unlock ancient secrets using a specific breed of plant. I don't know. This feels a little, a little scary. Maybe we're using the plants, revering them for the poisons. Maybe we're lining our daggers with some sort of a new toxin, untraceable. <laughs> oh, have like a ship here. Oh, I can like go into it. Well, this is not what I was expecting from Dark Brotherhood. <laughs> so maybe a bit of a clockwork vibe here too. Wow, this is cool. Using the big fabricant tanks, all of these moving parts from the clockwork style. Big tonal arcs had a lot of structure to this place. Kind of give it some cover as well. Oh, it's a new it's a new antiquity. This this is a antiquity from um, I want to say Balfoyan. Or, or is it clockwork? I don't think it's clockwork. This this is star chart star chart dwarven star chart. From the antiquity system. Looks looks fun. Looks a little magical. Oh, it's from Strossum Kai. Strossum Kai. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I see something. I see something amazing. I think this will be the first time I've seen one of these in a house. Ah, uh, Ixie. Ixie. Doing me proud here. This is a visual effect of that pulsing light. Can I get up here? I want to get up here without falling. Uh oh. No promises. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful figurehead. Oh my gosh. 
It's the most amazing, most amazing. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. I'm totally gonna do a contest in July centered around this furnishing. <laughs> oh. That's this one's from Gold Coast. Um, you get the lead from the antiquity system. You get the lead from it by repeatedly doing the, the world boss in the Folly Delve. Okay, awesome, awesome. Or the, the Folly location, Tribune's Folly. Moo 2.0, I know. It's bigger, more glorious than the original. Oh no, I've been replaced. <laughs> Everyone says, Kvatch is full of the Order of the Hourglass who rivals the Dark Brotherhood. Oh, I see, oh, see, I see. That would make sense. That would be why you have the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary in Gold Coast too. So this is m more like a Gold Coast so that's interesting. It's a Gold Coast-centric build with the Sanctuary here and the Moo Head and the Dark Brotherhood. So it all does tie it back together. Cool. More Moo. Mooier. It's Mooier. <laughs> and I think that will... Uh, I saw the back side room, right? Okay, that'll do it then. No, no, there's one room. This, this, this room. Final room. <laughs> Went the wrong way. We'll go start with the treasure first. Normally would come in from this other angle. But we have... Oh yeah, more Dark Brotherhood. Dark Brotherhood wolf up above. Fireplace. Good use of this Daedric fencing. Gives it a bit more of a... Uh, kind of a cold, practical, fire grate type of a feel. Using the Daedric fence. Come sit here and plot. <laughs> I actually really like the look of this place. It's like a little sparse with the furnishings, but that I think that fits the cold feel that they're going for with this being a bit more of a like a Dark Brotherhood sanctuary. Don't want a lot of clutter with that. Oh, they have a portal here, too. Portal... I wonder where that's going. To their Grand Citric Villa. I'll, I'll not go there, because I don't think that they had invited me there yet, but... That's a portal with essential housing tools. Using the mirror. Mirror's a clever choice for the portal, by the way. You can just put those wherever. Like the storage chest on the Talvani bookshelves. Oh, I didn't really get back to that. Uh... Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, no. Wait, where are you looking? Where are you looking? Oh, here, here, right there. Yeah, that <laughs> uh, works well. Oh, Duchess Marcia with a resub. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Keep making all the things they move. Okay. Thank you so much, Ixie. Oh, man. I'm so excited to see what people will do with my face. What people do. Oh, oh, oh. This is clever. I didn't even see this coming in because it looks so natural. So, uh, they've made the little thing to haul containers. <laughs> so, using a cart there, some... Oh. Did they build that up from scratch too? Oh, well, and they've added an orcish counter there. They've used, a, I think, a torture device. <laughs> and then, and then just a crate there. And it looks fun. All very mechanical here too. Moo mechanical, yes, it's a moo moo mechanical ship. Beautiful, oh, 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 so exciting. <laughs> okay, well, we'll keep moving along here. We'll go to Palipsest. Has two homes for me. We'll continue to get some decoration inspiration as we tour these lovely houses. Okay, and thank you everybody for opening these up. Okay, I don't know anything about these. I think I had maybe seen some screenshots on the forums at some point. Or maybe on Discord. Anyway, uh, Daggerfall Overlook and Moon Sugar Meadow. Let's go and explore. I'm going to guess it's whatever is this way. <laughs> it looks kind of like a face. Now, if I had to guess, I'm going to peek in here. As again, it's like a matter of whether or not you use the inside or the outside. I'm just going to peek in and see. Yeah, I think everything is outside. 
about weighing where you're putting your furnishing cap. Ixie says, thanks for visiting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Ixie was also incredible with helping me get furnishings on the PTS when that was up. Really appreciate you. Oh, somebody's here. Somebody's here. We have a face. Big mechanical face. Can I descend into it? Whoa, that's like a big ship. I guess it's not face. It's just the engine. Oh my gosh. It's like a big airship. Like huge, ginormous airship here. All those display cases, making this lovely glass window. Very mechanical look. Magical? Like a big wind sail up here, so we can just go off into the clouds. Love these display cases, they just really catch the light, make us feel like even more airy is kind of like the feel it's going for. Okay, really fun, really fun. And then we can descend into the body of the ship. What are we doing up in the sky? Ooh, having a big meeting. HFX Tenor with a follow. Appreciate that. Welcome to our housing hike. Currently in Palipsest's home. PCEU. Big airship of some sort. It's impressive. I know, it's awesome, isn't it? Big meeting place here. You want a bigger table, just put the tables side by side. You get a bigger table. Big as you need it to be. They needed it to be really big. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We can, like, go into, like, this observatory area. Oh, this is cool. With, like, all the floating bodies up there. Celestial bodies. The Nidic orbs, the Bizzle Pearls. All these floating magical things. We're going up into the stars, charting a course, going off on an adventure. Makes me wonder if this is a bit more than an airship. Maybe it's more like a spaceship. <laughs> hope those hope those uh, windows can survive it. Of course they can. They're like magically reinforced. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> more going on with this airy spaceship. Living quarters, very lively, very loud, all the mechanical components going around. Going with a lot of Red Guard and elsewhere, colorful style furnishings. Kind of nice tight quarters for a lot of the people that might be guests here. So it seems like a bit more of like, maybe like a luxury travel ship. We have a balcony here. <laughs> can run laps here in the morning. Nightingale, 128, with a follow. Thank you, welcome to our housing hike. Getting some decoration inspiration on EU right now. We're in Palimpsest's airship. Done an amazing job of putting this together. Oh, all the machinery down in, in the bottom. The boilers, the engines. Keeping this thing afloat. Imagine the crew could come here and, and uh, be at all the stations here. I think Palimpsest is with a big, or I don't know if they're an officer or they run a guild. Uh, does a lot of RP events. If you're here, <laughs> if you're here, I know about that in Twitch chat. Maybe, maybe let me know. It's such a great ship. I'll ask, uh, do you use this for guild events? It's such a good build. I, I imagine you could do all sorts of RP fun things going on here. Efron says, just remember that the Khajiit from beyond the moons from elsewhere. <laughs> Maybe that's how they got to Nern. 
It could be, it could be. So I'll make sure I don't miss too much. There might be, oh, there's maybe another viewing platform over this way. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Oh, I didn't even see the side of this. This is great, this is great. Because you can see, like, the thing would be spinning <laughs> as we go through. Maybe stabilizing it, maybe returning some energy back. Oh, even has an anchor hanging down. No, I couldn't see that from up above. Well, that's great. That's great. Amazing build. It's so big and well thought out. Oh, wait, it has an animation. Do you see it? Do you see it? It's spinning a bit. <laughs> so that's using essential housing tools. You can have have these uh, scenes in which in which you can add these sorts of animations. So you program them in to be on the loop. Cool, 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 cool. I'm wondering if there's anything else moving. It's such a big build. You say, uh, everyone says, I love the dish at the top with the beam. Like broadcasting a signal. <laughs> Maybe playing loud music. Stunning. I know, I know. It's beautiful. Oh, oh wrong button. Uh, okay, I think I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, moving on to the next one. If you like this one, which hard not to, <laughs> uh, we have another home from Palimpsest. We're gonna go to their Moon Sugar Meadow. Awesome, awesome. Okay, we only have a couple homes left today. Land Sugar Meadow. I'm going to guess they have another mechanical creation. Doesn't just, just a feeling. <laughs> seems to be seems to be what they do well. Ooh, that is. It looks like a like a dragonfly. Let's get in. What do we have here? It was big Eleanor Crescent carpets being here, used here for the wings. That's awesome how the spacing works on those. Get some nice curvature. Again, using those decorative sky shards. Kind of a mix of like magic and raw mechanical power. <laughs> oh, that's really impressive. No, <laughs> sunning the horn. The horn must be some of the animations. Oh wow, this is a really, I didn't realize, realize how tall it is. I can see the windmills, the turbines on the bottom. That windmill is just a huge structure. They placed it upside down just to get the uh, fans on the bottom. It looks like a like a dragonfly or something like that. With It even has like antennae. <laughs> awesome. Are those the Eleanor carpets? All right, all right. Everybody with the shocks, with the porns. It's beautiful. Anchor down. Oh, don't leave the goats behind. It even has like an observatory. Oh, I can I can observation deck here. Oh, that's so cool. Like a huge, 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 huge like blimp, like airship. I love the anchor here. It feels very stretched out, like it wants to pull up. <laughs> Anchor is holding on dearly. Okay, getting up here. Looks like guests will come up this ramp. Maybe sign in. And then we can... Ooh, get up into the belly of this thing. Oh, this is cool. This is so cool. <laughs> Store up an army in here. Let's see. What? Hold on to the ramp. Maybe this is to transport an army. Oh, big whooshy sounds from those windmills. Uh, Polly says, I'm really impressed by the decorators who can repurpose furnishings. My brain just doesn't work that way at all. I know, I, that's why I'm always impressed by is just the creative things they can come up with. Okay, they're transporting all sorts of goodies, all sorts of goodies. Kind of opens up out here. 
feel the breeze. I imagine I imagine this won't go too fast. At least you would hope not. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. So all the storage is up above. Oh, great use of this um, Alnor grape stomping tub. And then they've added sand in it. It just makes a really big, wide barrel planter. Perfect. With the sand in it and the plants and the trees in it. Ooh, are they triggering some animations? What's gonna move? Are the wings gonna move? Are we all gonna move? Oh, I kinda like how you can like go up around it, just crawl all over this thing. <laughs> are, the, are the antennae gonna wiggle? I think that they might have some, these bells and horns might actually be some animation triggers. So I'm kinda curious what they might do. Uh, Flim says it not just outside the box. The box never went anywhere <laughs> near their builds. Yeah, we're really creative here. Oh, it's using a greenhouse for the front. I didn't even notice that before. That's how they got the glass look on the front. A bit more economical furnishing cap wise than just a billion display cases. You get a nice glass front to this. Works perfectly. <laughs> You have the huge Eleanor greenhouse and you take it and just flop it around and <laughs> use it as the front of a ship. See, that's totally creative. I, I love I love what people can do with these. Well, do I go down? I can keep going down the front of the ship. There's also something in the middle of the ship, some sort of uh, place for visitors, it seems. This would maybe be for the captain. Lots of books. Well studied. A little fancier with a private bath. We have the, uh, Captain Nuzuma here. Or maybe just filling in, taking over, maybe, maybe first mate for Pelops as the homeowner. Okay, that's, that's cool. Let's, let's try to get to the middle of the ship, too. I think I had options at some point. I think I had an option to go down at some point. Or up? Or not? Mm, or maybe that's it. Which is fine. Or maybe I missed it. I'm wondering if it's possible to get down into that middle room. Very well might not be. I would imagine that these windmills would be kind of obstructing everything. But maybe it's possible. Pearl inside the celestial dome. Uh, let me let me check on that. Down there. Uh, yeah, I think that's like a needed orb. Yeah, that's a, that's a needed orb in there. Makes it look magical. Okay, I think I think that will do it then. I think we. Well, they're still triggering things. Let me go up to the top and see if they've triggered anything. Ah. <laughs> Try to get back up. It's such a tall structure. Oh, let me see if I may say anything. I'll ask if there are any triggers I should be looking for. Wait, 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 maybe I can get down here. <laughs> Lovely view from up here, too. Like, you feel, you feel like you're just, like, coasting along here, up, up in the sky, on this dragonfly. MXL says, every time I see an airship in video games, I have to think about the old PS2 game, Rule of Rose. Not familiar with that. Wait, 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 they say, just one minute. There's something going on. <laughs> they, they have some sort of animation. 
I'll ask if I can get down to the middle. No, okay, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you for letting me come, Pam. I think we saw everything. X says it's huge. I, I know, it's huge. Just like, think of all this. And it's so tall, too. Like, it, it's all directions, all directions. Adding all these rooms, all the engines. They say, thank you. And adding a bit of a luxurious element to it, too. Okay, huge, huge airship. Well, let me, let me try to get a good view of it from a scary place. <laughs> Mm, mm, there we go. There we go. Let's see how ginormous this is. Fun airship. Awesome, awesome. Intimidating from the ground, too. Okay, and we'll continue along. We have mm, three houses left. Three houses left. For today's housing hike on EU. <laughs> okay, next up we will go to Fob Quoresora Kragenholm. Kragenholm, great house to get. You can buy it unfurnished. It comes with a dark elf bed of coals. It's actually worth more than the house is. So you can get yourself an effectively free house if you go buy Kragen home unfurnished with gold. <sighs> wow. Um, oh, this is awesome. This is my favorite, my favorite of the new antiquity furnishings. Um, is this Moon's Blessed Ceremonial Pool. Now, I'm just going to show you how you can get this. Go to... If you have Greymore and have antiquities, go to the Moonlit Cove, delve here in Southern Elsewhere, and just loot urns and backpacks. You'll get the lead for this before too long. Unfortunately, you have to be like super max level <laughs> with your antiquities before you can actually go pick it up. Um, dig it up. Oh, so they've really already added so much to this place. So this is... Now, what, I was really impressed just coming in because the Kragen home is like dark, dark, uh, with all the dark elf uh, brickwork all around it, metalwork kind of incorporated into the windows. But they've totally redone this. They've replaced all the black walls with this white Eleanor marble. They've added this lovely moon's blessed pool here. Uh, they've even had it a little bit like this is more like you see the steam coming up. They probably add some incense down into that. Uh, makes it look like this would be like a hot hotter area of this and maybe a bit of more of a cool area adding a lot of the new paintings as well new paintings that you can get from thieving or from treasure chests adding the new antiquity furnishing knar thief tapestry just found that one from backpacks yeah backpacks in that delve is very specific to that place and this man this feels like such a luxuri luxurious kraken home the amazing thing is, this is only 113 items out of 200 in this place, too. It feels so full. Very busy vanity. All the fancy bottles. New mirror. New mirror from Solitude Style. This is a new craftable mirror as well. Now we can turn this on. I wonder if I'll be able to. Now, they went with a more subdued type of a look here, but you can turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> and really make this place sparkle and be magical if you invoke the blessing of the moon. So, it's a little blinding that way. But maybe if your eyes are attuned to it, you can, you can be here a bit more magical. I like it just as well without it being here. It's a bit more practical, but if you want to go totally moon's blessed, you can go totally moon's blessed. This is awesome. I, and this, is, this is my favorite furnishing. By the way, I did make a video highlighting all of the an antiquity furnishings on my YouTube channel. You, you can uh, look it up there. Just such a lovely repurposing of this place. Like everything, even the fireplace. Place to drink. 
new music box. This is the one from the antiquity system as well. There are three different pieces of it. If you want to change the music style here. I'll leave it how it was, though. Okay. Oh, Fob says, oh, you're here. Depending on its popularity, there may be an upgrade to Velothi Reverie with more pools, etc. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Well, I, I think this is perfect. Um, <laughs> this is the first time I've seen the ceremonial pool in a player's house, so I think you've done an amazing, amazing, amazing job incorporating it here. This does not look at all like Kragenholm normally does, and it's a perfect little, like, getaway. This feels like a very nice place to relax. Let uh, me hey, hey. <laughs> try to get a screenshot if I can with everything in here. <laughs> it's so big, the camera doesn't really want to work with me too well. Oh, uh, yeah, this this is just great. Okay, thank you, Fob. I say thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Beautiful place. That was just really using using that home. Totally, totally changing it. You get very personalized. I imagine all those little incense bottles and perfume bottles, lovely vanities. You can kind of think of how you would actually use that space if, if it were you. Or how your guests might use it too. <laughs> party pool, I know, it looks like a party pool. <laughs> it's big enough that everybody can... Uh, Sit down in it. Have a soak. Okay, we have two homes left. We have Ananarch's Gorner Estate. Not quite sure what Ananarch will have done here. Wow, 600 items. Okay, cool. Let's see if Ananarch... Oh, I see skulls. Ananarch is an amazing decorator. Um, really able to use a terrain and re- Forge it, reshape it, restylize it. Mastery of, of all the, the rocks and the plants to really change the look of everything. So all the all the carcasses and skeletons and skulls and the, the Daedric fencing and everything. The red and the black color scheme here definitely seems to indicate... This is a dangerous place. <laughs> um, I stand out of it. Stand out. Uh, you love you love the look of this. I know. I know. Eric always does a good job with the pet. Ooh, ooh. We even have like, like. This is clever. So, there are these cold hold, cold harbor boulders that you can get from the home goods furniture. Um, they have a very black underside that's very flat. Most people will use them as like floors and things like that, but they're so black it kind of looks like like a guitar pit here. And you see the <laughs> the the corpses struggling to get out of there. Oh, that's amazingly clever, super super clever, creepy creepy. Come on, more of these tar pits. I mean, they're just they're out for a swim. It's um, it's a it's a mud pit. They're just you know they're they're getting their beauty bath in here, right? It detoxifies. It it um. It, it exfoliates. It's 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 good for the skin. You'll you'll look twenty years younger. <laughs> Why do we have death pits? <laughs> Oh man, it conti oh man, it just like continues. Oh, this is like wow. It's totally impressive. Oh, it's the Aeliad Lightwell. This is from I wanna say from Betnik from the Antiquity Furnishings. Just like this one furnishing really adds a lot to it. Funny thing it is, I don't think it had this light effect when I was previewing it on PTS, so it looks very impressive here. It really draws a lot of attention to itself. So we have a lovely, like, pit of souls. I mean, uh, they're just like exfoliating mud bath 
spa people. <laughs> right, right. It's just a mud bath. It's just a mud bath. It's a premium spa. Um, right. This is what I expect from premium spas. Um, okay. It might, it might be like pools for the souls of the damned or something, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Maybe there's some sort of, oh gosh, it's so creepy. It's just so perfectly executed. Get up here. Maybe have a dive in. Oh, oh yeah, so we can go cliff diving from here. <laughs> Extreme exfoliation. <laughs> That's right. The cliff diving, jump in. Wee. Oh, 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 oh. I was very vis or viscous. Non viscous. Oh, I always get those two mixed up. It's so thick you can walk on it. That's that's all good. For me at least. Love it. <laughs> so just all the colors, all like the one blue thing here. So yeah, this is actually definitely interesting. So it's like all black, it's all red. And then there's this one blue focal point. It's kind of like maybe this place is drawing energy out of all the souls here. Masterfully done. Good job. Good job, Ananark. I can imagine this like being a load screen, like this being a delve. Oh, I think so. It's so cool uh, how the dark rocks make the scene. I know, I know. Crunchy, crunchy. That's right. Okay, I think I think that will do it. I think I'll do it. Incredible. Oh, that one's escaping. No, no, no. Step on your feet. <laughs> step, or step on your fingers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, let's continue on. Continuing, continuing on. Thunder on. This will be the last one. What time is it? They said it would be better to come at night. I put you at the very, 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 very end. It might be a little darker out right now. Okay, so Forge Master Falls. This will be the final home for PCEU. And they say... Oh, we'll get in here. We'll get in here. I think that they've kind of redone how this place is going to look. <laughs> Long live the king. That's kind of what I was going for. <laughs> okay, this will be our final home on EU. Then I'll wrap up for the VOD, and then we'll, we'll do some giveaways for Twitch chat. I'm going to continue to do some things for Twitch. Okay, Thunderon has something different. They say to stay clear of the castle sewers. They say the theme of this is that darkness spreads. Ooh. Oh, this is so cool. So, oh, wow. So Forge Master Falls is right on the water. And then you kind of go up towards the mountains. There's waterfalls there. And there are kind of like some little orc buildings that you can kind of use. But... Thunderon has made an entire village instead, so all of these buildings have been made from scratch. And then this, all back here, that's all been built out from nothing. So, oh, do you go to the building first or to the explore the village first? I'm going to explore the village first. How, how is this village handling? Ooh, not very well. Things are on fire. Things are... All old and dusty and cobwebby and a zombie. What are you doing out here? It's not safe, or is it not safe because a zombie is out here? <laughs> oh, like all the, like the boarded up windows. It's like super clever, super super clever. Oh, back of like a bookshelf. Yeah, really creative repurposing of some like Mark Meyer benches for this uh, doorway too. feels old. Good use of these bricks, too, because they're like all covered in algae and everything. Ah, oh, we have like a place for the covenant. Maybe abandoned. At least the tapestries are still looking kind of fresh. Maybe they visit every once in a while. There's some sort of like a woodworking 
uh, shop here, but it's all not accessible. But de definitely makes this place feel a bit more full. <laughs> a bounty. A, oh, this is clever. So it's like a, like a bounty board, but it has the skulls there, which would indicate, it could indicate one of two things. Either these are dangerous people or just they're all wanted dead. No wanted dead or alive. They're just like, kill them. <laughs> kill them. Get your bounty. I, I think it definitely lends a sense of danger to, to whatever's going on, even without the details. Um, yeah, this is Thunderon's Forge Master Falls, so really changing it up. Ooh, ooh, venture. Got lost in the good book there. Ah, oh, yeah, oh, it's all boarded up. Oh, oh. Oh, no, dog waited to hear for their owner to come back. Oh, it's all sad. So going with a dilapidated, abandoned type of a village here. Maybe used to be a thriving place. Something, something has gone afoul, though. What happened here? Maybe a mystery. Maybe, ooh, maybe, maybe this witch pike is some sort of a clue. Well, we'll go see, because this place seems to be thriving. There's a lot of life there. It's a little messy. Maybe that has also been abandoned. Maybe this used to be pristine, a pristine palace. Maybe there weren't all these swampy trees there at one point. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely all broken up. Ooh. Ooh, they said not to go into the sewers. I think this must be the sewer. Ooh, entry. Uh, maybe an entry to the sewer. <laughs> Skeletons cl climbing up. Maybe there was some sort of like a, a zombie uprising from the sewers. Ooh. Yeah, we see more of these like a witch pike. So maybe they actually kind of built off of what we saw from the Greymore storyline. Having something to do with the witches and harrow storms. Let's see if I... Well, no, I can't really get up into this structure. So this, this palace, the castle seems to have been overrun as well. Well, gotta find the source of this. What caused this? What is down here? Oh, I, I have to go into the sewers. I think this is a one-way trip. Oh, no. The cursed ruins destroyed the town. I know, I know. It's so cool. Pirates, maybe? Could be pirates. Zombie pirates. Oh, oh that's... We're where the slaughterfish are. I have to be careful or I will die. Oh, no. Ooh, sewers. Kind of like Ooh, lots of bones down here, too. Carcasses. Oh, ooh, tortury things. Yeah, what happened to the villagers? Oh, man, it's just like slaughterfish constantly nipping at me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Molag ball worshippers? Based off the tapestry, maybe they need to gather some sacrifices for some sort of ritual. Seems to be the, seems to be something like that. This is like the most lively part of this house. Kind of interesting. It kind of looks like, like a treasure pile, but it's just all these bodies. <laughs> just like they're all piled up here. Uh, a lot of dark energy coming through here. It's a lot of skulls. I know, I know. <laughs> Must have been fun to decorate this place. It's like, oh, well, I need another skull over here. It's, it needs to be more balanced. Oh, no, I definitely need another carcass over this way. <laughs> more bones, more bones into the pile. All right. Oh, Lunarami. Hey, it's so good to see you. You can go follow Lunarami there at twitch.tv slash Lunarami. Great streamer, great streamer. Lunarami says this place is amazing. I just keeps continuing. Oh, I, I love how they place this just so that if I were to stand still, the slaughterfish would kill me, But so I have to keep moving. <laughs> I think that's probably in t an intended effect, though you get also the water kind of in between all the rocks here, too. It makes it feel all wet and creepy. Ooh, corpses this way too. Oh, we seem to have maybe also 
raided a graveyard here. Maybe maybe adding those to the ritual. Okay, that's like very secretive off to the side too. Okay, yeah, so some sort of a ritual for Molech Ball, based off the one banner. Creepy Vampire Home. Seem to have sapped the life out of this village. Amazing, amazing job, Thunder On. Really changed the look of this place. That's hard to do, too. But using some of these big structural pieces, and then kind of using those as building blocks, and then just adding adding some remnants of what was the village, and maybe adding a couple of details here and there to make it look old, make it look in a sorry state. There was some, some attempt here to keep main, maintain order with the stockade, but didn't, didn't work out for them. Totally, totally devastated here. Okay, that's awesome. So that will do it. So there'll be all 11 houses I had for PCEU this week. And again, this was streamed live at twitch.tv slash jhrl, so you can join us during the live streams. And I'll have this put up on YouTube. You can subscribe to me there for free. Helps a lot if you do. And thank you. And I'll upload the pictures of this at my website, spicyeconomics.com, if you need ideas for your own projects. So this has been a lot of fun. We've seen so many different stylings as we've gone through here. Seen some of the new Greymore furnishings being added, the Solitude style furnishings especially, and some of the antiquities, which are fun to see in people's houses. Probably see more of those in the coming weeks. Also have a couple of contests here on the Twitch channel. We'll have yeah, do a couple of contests every month. You can check the forums of on ESO forums under the housing section for details on that, or look on my website for a link. And that will do it. Thank you so much, everybody. We can do so much with housing and ESO. New furnishings have really opened up what you can do, and you can style things the way you want, personalize it, make something totally different, like those really fun airships. Make something that fits your character or something that tells a story. And you can have a lot of fun with it. So have fun with housing, have fun with ESO, and stay spicy. Moo. No.